two wins from a title. So which teams got the first of those wins Saturday in the semifinals? In Connecticut, the Elm City Express were hoping for another clean sheet against CD Aguiluchos, but the visitors didn't travel 3,000 miles to get shut out. We'll show you who is moving on. In the other semifinal, a raucous crowd in Detroit was hoping their city squad could punch their ticket to the final. But Midland Odessa wasn't ready for their postseason run to end just yet. We'll have highlights from Motown. Plus, we have our postseason award winners and our next round of trivia, as this week in the NPSL takes the show on the road next. I feel smarter already. We're coming to you from the campus of Yale University, which Saturday night was the host for the first semifinal between the Elm City Express and the visitors from CD Aguiluchos. And we welcome you inside Reese Stadium for this week's edition of This Week in the NPSL. I'm your host, Paul Boron, and the host Elm City Express have rolled through the postseason and they've been stingy on defense. In fact, that's the way it's been the entire season. Five goals given up the regular season, only one in the postseason, and that was last week on penalty kicks against Clarkstown SC. Their opponent, C.D. Aguiluchos, had two clean sheets in the playoffs of their own. So this figured to be a low-scoring affair Saturday night here on the campus of Yale University, right? Well, both teams didn't come out like they were playing for a low-scoring match. It was a perfect night for a semifinal in New Haven, and both teams didn't exactly ease into this match as the action was frenetic from the start. Second minute, good ball into the box, but Kevin Gonzalez aggressively out to punch it away. Another chance for Elm City in the third minute, but this half volley sails over the bar. C.D. Agaluchos two minutes later with their first great chance, Simon Rawlinsley. Terrific footwork to get free, but Matt Jones robs him from point blank. Then the sequence of the match, eighth minute, good cross into the box, looks like a chance for a wide open net, but Jones gets across and makes the great save. A minute later, the Express coming back the other way and Graciano Brito beats Gonzalez and Elm City is out to the one nothing lead. Looking for more in the 25th minute, but Gonzalez is able to fight this one off. 34th minute, Shaquille Sanchez in on Gonzalez, attempts to chip it past the CD keeper, but Gonzalez gets his left hand to it. Stoppage time of the first half and Bull Morgan gets the steal. Eventually splits two defenders with a beautiful through ball to Sanchez and he would not be denied this time. 2-0 Express at the half. Second half now and Morgan turns and shoots but Gonzalez makes the save. 54th minute off the corner, a decent opportunity for Aguiluchos but Jones with another save. 74th minute, Lucas Gabriel with a rocket. Gonzalez may have gotten a fingertip to it but regardless it carries into the bar. But no matter because Elton City wins it 2 0, and the celebration is on in New Haven as the Express rolls on to the title match. The statistics tell the story Elm City with 15 shots to Aguiluchos just five, seven saves for the CD Aguiluchos keeper, but it wasn't enough as you see both teams even on corner kicks. So Elm City has punched their ticket to the finals, and now let's hear from some of the heroes in New Haven. You guys are going to be playing for the title in this team's first season. Tell me how that feels. <laughs> it's amazing, man. For the city of New Haven, this is what we do it for, the fans, you know. We come out here and do what we're supposed to do every day, do what the coaches tell us, and just create an atmosphere that everybody enjoys soccer. When we started, it wasn't there wasn't that much fans to come out, but now look at it. The amount of people that are coming out to it, the semifinals, just imagine when the finals, everybody in town is going to be there. <laughs> Take me through your goal. Um, it's just one of those counterattack goals, bull. You know, Bull, we go through practice every day, me and Bull, get that ball, hold it up, and this coach always tells me to commit and just put my head down and go, it's going to come. So that's what I did. I put my head down, go, and Bull saw me, two touches, and that's it. Next week you play for a championship. Just uh, I know it's you want to soak this one in a little bit, but uh, tell me how that, that's going to feel walking on this field playing for a title. That's just amazing, man. Just for the, just for the, the atmosphere, I can't wait. I'm already ready to go to that one because... <laughs> This one's already done, so you're ready to go for the championship now. To play in the first first year of this um, team's existence is just amazing. This one you can't, you will never, this is a script you won't write. Nobody could have wrote this one this year. <laughs> this team, first year in existence, and now they're going to play for a title. Can you even put into words how that's even possible? No, uh, well, I know how it's possible. It's possible through the hard work from the, the backroom staff uh, all the way through the players. Everybody's put in a shift, everybody's given it their all. 
Um, the management staff have done things right. They they run it as if it's a professional club, which for us it is. Um, and all credit goes to them and the players in front of them. Tell me about the early part of this match. You had to come up with a couple big saves because CD came out here attacking. Yeah, we went at our best in the first 15, 20 minutes, but um, we found a way to get through it. And then hit, hit the, the second goal was big. We hit him on the counter attack. And then from there, it's we just did our jobs as usual. We, we have... We have a good relationship at the back and we're confident that whatever game we go into, we're not going to concede goals. So once we were up 2-0, I, I was confident from there. A week from the night, you're going to play for a championship right here on this field. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? Oh, it's great. I'll say for, for the, the local area, for Connecticut, it's great. Um, unfortunately, for the past few years, there's been very little professional soccer here in Connecticut. So we're glad that we've, we've, we've entered the league now. We're, we've, we've had a lot of success early on, but our job's not done yet. Next week, we're there to, to win the games. So the Express has punched their ticket to the finals. And when we return, we will see who they will face for the championship as Midland Odessa traveled to the Motor City, where Detroit City was looking to keep lighting up the scoreboard and energizing their big crowd. That is next. Keep up to date on NPSL with scores, schedules, stats, and exclusive content on NPSL.com. Visit NPSL.com to browse our dedicated ticket platform, read up on NPSL Spotlight, and view the latest episode of This Week in the NPSL. Welcome back to New Haven, where Elm City Express is celebrating their 2-0 semi-final victory. But who did the rejoicing in Detroit? Well, the home team, Detroit City FC, has been lighting up the scoreboard. Ten goals in three postseason matches. Facing a Midland Odessa team that was a bit of a surprise, but not really when you look at what they've done in the postseason, giving up just two goals in four postseason matches. Well, what would happen in Detroit? Well, it would take a long time to find out. This one was low scoring, but both teams certainly had plenty of opportunities. Here, a nice combination by Midland Odessa, but the shot sails over the crossbar. Fernando Pena had a big night here, making a save, jumping over a Midland Odessa player. Then a team effort defensively by Detroit as Fernando Pena, Troy Watson, and Omar Sinclair prevent a goal after Ricardo Palomino dribbles to the end line. Another big save for Pena as Alex Van Holy plays a through ball to Andrew Mendoza behind the Detroit City defensive line, but Pena makes the save. Another opportunity for Midland Odessa is Ricardo Palomino takes a shot, but it sails over the crossbar. Then Detroit City with an opportunity. Jordan Tyler's shot, defended well by Midland Odessa. And then Cyrus Sadie with a shot that just goes wide of the net. Super sub Zach Penner deking around the Detroit City defense, but Omar Sinclair clears the ball away from the goal. Then another great save by Pena off of the header by Midland Odessa. Then Van Holy shooting and Pena making the point blank save. Omar Sinclair sending a ball across the box. Roddy Green keeps it in play, but Midland Odessa clears it away. Later, another big save by Fernando Pena as he punches this one away. Some great late chances for Detroit City. Dave Edwardson and Cyrus Sadie both have opportunities. They're saved by Midland Odessa on the post. And Sadie crossing it across to Greg Janicki. His header hits the crossbar, does not go into the net, and we would be down to penalty kicks. Detroit City misses early on and Alvaro Rubio puts Midland Odessa on top. Detroit City is in big trouble after Andrew Mullen scores. Jamie O'Grady with a chance to put it away for Midland Odessa, but his shot goes off the crossbar. Stephen Carroll keeps Detroit City alive with this goal. So it all comes down to Elliot Bentley and he buries it and sends Midland Odessa on to the national championship. So Linares Ortiz comes up with a couple of big saves on PKs and Fernando Pena was brilliant in regulation and extra time for Detroit City, but it is Midland Odessa FC moving on. Jake Gaten spoke with one of the happy finalists this week back in Midland. Hey, thanks, Paul. Here with Andrew Mullen, the midfielder from Midland Odessa FC. Andrew, thanks for being here with us. Let's start with last Saturday. You're going into Detroit City FC. Talk about the experience. I know we, it was going to be a big crowd off the start. Uh, how was that game in, in the beginning? Uh, it was unbelievable. You know, from the beginning, they were there 25, 30 minutes before the game. And, uh, you know, we had to get used to it in the warm up. And then throughout the game, it was kind of weird because we kind of blocked them out. We were very focused. Uh, our communication on the field kind of blocked them out. But, you know, it was incredible playing in front of 75, 100 engaged fans. They were chanting the whole time, and it was a great experience. 
Uh, talk about w when did you really understand, hey, we can win this game and, and kind of realize that within the game? Well, from the beginning, I felt like we could win this game. From the beginning kickoff, I felt like we could win the game. Once the, a couple shots didn't go in, we had a couple great chances in the first half. But uh, once second, the shots didn't go in, I started thinking to myself, you know, maybe we're going to have to grind this one out again like we have. Um, but I knew that the team, you know, the recent form we've had, the one nil wins, I knew we could do it. Uh, in the overtime when we had the two goal line clearances, that's when it was kind of like, are we going to win or are we not going to win? But once we got the penalties, I knew for sure that we were going to win, uh, just knowing this team. So Penalty kicks. That celebration, we saw it. It was awesome. Just walk me through it. How awesome was that experience? It was unbelievable. Uh, you know, you're playing in front of 7,500, and when you're playing, you're you just focused on playing or whatever. But once you've won, it's just at that point, it's just like you just go crazy a little bit, and the the pressure's all off, and now it's just time to celebrate. So once we scored the winning penalty, everyone knew it was just time to go celebrate. So. Yeah, the celebration was awesome. All right, now let's look forward to towards this week. Elm City Express in New Haven, Connecticut. Do you know anything about them at all? Uh, absolutely nothing. I know they're number one, but at this point in the season, numbers don't matter. So, you know, we're coming in, and we feel we feel like we can, we can win the game or else we wouldn't show up. So um, we feel like we can win, and we feel like we can really compete. So. Uh, you guys have just that just stingy defense, and your your goal for the playoffs is just attack early. Are you going to continue that this next week? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, you know that's that's what's gotten us to this point. So I don't see why we would change it at this point. And you know, as long as we have eleven on the field, I feel as though we can win any game. So um, same again for uh, Saturday. So. All right, so you guys are going to have only eleven players. Is that kind of daunting knowing that you're going to have to play the whole entire game? For me personally, not at all because I've done that for the last. Since for uh, since Houston Houston Dutch Lions the last time, I played every single minute. So for me, no. For everyone else, you might have to ask them. But I think you know we'll be smart about how we how we uh, use our energy, and I think you know I think we can get it done. So. All right, last question for you. You're going to play on historic Yale Field. You know, every single soccer player has a dream of playing on historic yeah. fields like that. How awesome is that to, to play this the NPSL championship on that field? Well, I mean, we played at Detroit, which is an unbelievable field with unbelievable fans. So it's only fitting that the final is even on a more historic field. So, you know, I'm excited. I'm just taking it all in. You know, the the experience so far has been unbelievable in the playoffs. So, you know, I'm going. We're going to another field and hopefully another win. So, can you guys win it though? We will win it. Yeah. You heard it here first, guys. We're here with Andrew Mullen, the Midland Odessa midfielder. Paul, we're going to send it back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Jake, and congratulations to Midland Odessa. But when we come back, we will shift our attention back here to New Haven, and we will hear from the leader of the Elm City Express, Teddy Haley, after their 2-0 win has them one victory from a championship. MITRE is the official ball supplier of the National Premier Soccer League. Visit www.mitre-usa.com for more information. That's www.mitre-usa.com. Those are some of the sights and sounds of the celebration tonight here in New Haven as Elm City is on their way to play for the national championship. And one of the reasons for that is the man who engineered it all, head coach Teddy Haley. And coach, can you put into words, first of all, a first-year franchise and here you are a win away from the national championship? Uh, you know, it's a special group and uh, it started it started with the, the ownership and, and uh, the guys at top really coming in and wanting to do it, wanting to do it the right way. And uh, and then when we assembled the team, we knew that we would compete for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, we didn't really know uh, what the level was like. Uh, so it was one of those where, you know, early on in the year. Um, we were kind of feel, feeling it out, and uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of uh, changes in our roster, and uh, but certainly grew together, and uh, so we've we've gone on a special run. So it's been uh, it's been fantastic, and I owe it all to the guys. Well, let's talk about the match tonight. You guys have been stingy all year long. Five goals in the regular season, one in the playoffs, and that was on a penalty kick. And you do it another clean sheet tonight. Yeah, the the experience we have in the back uh, in Matt Jones and our goalkeeper, uh, he's just fantastic, you know, and he's he uh, gets us organized. And the back four, uh, the guys that have been playing together uh, for most of the year, have been uh, fantastic. And and we we've, we've talked about doing the little things right consistently, and uh, and that's how you keep clean sheets. And and uh, 
we 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 talk all the time about uh, making sure that we're we're unified in, in our approach and uh, and try to uh, like I said do the do the little things right. Well, speaking of Matt Jones, you you got two big saves from him in the first seven minutes. Yep. Uh, there was no feeling out process in this yep. match. It was open ended end to end, and uh, they get two great chances, and he keeps you in it, and then you get the goal on the other end. But yeah. just the job he did specifically in those first ten minutes. Yeah, early on uh, we weren't at our best, and and uh, we were a little bit. Um, against the wall and that's what you need out of a good goalkeeper you know and and to go on a run you need to uh, have have a guy like Matt step up and and make those critical saves and uh, and and to not concede uh, early was key and uh, and then we started to get a rhythm you know and and then we got our goal and and uh, and the game kind of uh, uh, flipped on its head and, and we we took more control over it so but he's huge you really did. After the first goal, you sensed that you guys were taking over, and obviously the backbreaker right before halftime. Just talk about both those goals, and uh, especially the second one and what it meant to this match. Yeah, to get the first one, uh, I thought we we it, it eased us up a little bit, and uh, we were able to relax and start to play a little bit. I thought we were tight coming in, and uh, and and didn't you know, like I said, didn't didn't catch a rhythm early on. Um, and then uh, after the goal, uh, we started to find ourselves a little bit and, uh, and, and stretch them a little bit more. Uh, and to get a goal that late in the half is obviously massive uh, to, to gain momentum. And to have that two goal lead going into half is, is, uh, is really good because we've, we've, um, we've, we've come out of the locker room usually and, and, and uh, stuck, to, stuck to our task and, and made sure that we uh, you know, were responsible. And, and we knew that they would get a little bit stretched Unfortunately, we didn't get the third, um, but we created a lot of chances in the second half and uh, and put them under pressure and and uh, yeah and then saw it out. So it was good. Finally, every one of the guys I talked to after the match talked about the crowds here, how they've built over the course of the year. You weren't sure what you guys were going to have early on, and now you have a stadium 2,500 tonight. Yeah. Um, just talk about the way things have progressed yeah. and the way the community has gotten behind this team, and now you get to play at home for a title in front of them. Yeah, the, New Haven as a whole has uh, embraced us, and um, there's been you know a few different supporters groups that, that have been part of it, and uh, they've been fantastic. And, and We've got uh, a lot of the, the local establish, establishments and, and uh, school systems, clubs that are that are sending sending people out, and uh, and so yeah, it's been it's been phenomenal. And to to bring to do something special for the city, and mostly in our first year, uh, to send the message that that uh, we can play some decent football and and go and win matches, and to be able to host a national championship game is uh, is the biggest stage you can play on. So uh, I'm proud of the guys for that, and and. Uh, Hopefully next week we can we can pack this place and uh, and go out and have a good performance. Well, congratulations! It was Thanks a spectacular a evening for Appreciate the Elm City it. Express. That's the head coach of the Express, Teddy Haley. When we come back, we will go back to Motown in that thrilling semifinal in Detroit. But first, it's time to look at this year's best of the best with our NPSL postseason awards. Soccer Stub is the official ticket provider of the NPSL and powers the league ticket platform. Support live local soccer by visiting tickets.npsl.com to find tickets to NPSL matches near you directly from NPSL teams. Time for trivia again this week, but first congratulations to Christopher McDonald for winning last week's contest. As you look at the answers to last week's questions, and we give you the newest questions, 
and you can win a great NPSL prize pack. Good luck. They love their pizza in New Haven and they love their Express. These are the Yard Dogs celebrating the win by the Elm City Express 2-0 over CD Agaluchos. But the fans in Detroit not quite as merry as their team falls to Midland Odessa in penalty kicks 4-2. And so Midland Odessa will come here to face Elm City Express for the national title game. Let's hear from another hero from the Express. Well, first year of existence for this team and you're playing for a championship. Can you put that into words? Uh, right now, I can't describe it. It's an uh, amazing feeling, but it all comes with great work, uh, hard work from the coaching staff, from our managers, from Zach, the president, and uh, all my teammates. It's been a, a proud moment for us, but we're not done. Uh, we're feeling great about ourselves right now. We're going to celebrate, but then we're going to go back to work on, on Monday and try to get a national championship. Take me through your goal, especially because CD was uh, attacking early. Matt makes a couple big saves, and then you come up with a goal on the count. I just thought Matt was outstanding because we came a little nervous, what is natural because it's a semifinal. I saw the ball bounce. As soon as the ball bounced in front of the defender, I just gamble a little bit, and he tries to pass to the goalkeeper, and I uh, was lucky enough to be in the end of it. And uh, a week from tonight, you're going to play for a championship in front of these fans. Can you even put into words what you think that'll be like? When the project first started and they were talking about playing here, I would never imagine that we would be getting this kind of crowd. And I hope, hopefully, for the final, it will be the same type. Uh, atmosphere was great today. Like you can see the drummers, all the people. And it's been uh, out, the fans from New Haven been outstanding. So hopefully they keep coming and support the team, not only for the final, but for the coming years. And finally, uh, we saw you leave the match early with the uh, injury. Uh, can you give us any details? Any, any chance you're not playing next? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but I will do anything in my power to try to come back for ne next week. Uh, it was a little hamstring, pull it a little bit, but hopefully it's nothing too serious and I can come back next week to play a national championship. We will be there to crown our 2017 champion, and we'll have all the highlights and post-game reaction from our champions when we come back here to New Haven next week. Thanks to everyone here who is such a great help to us, and we'll be back here next week for this week in the NPSL.